Hello. Um, hi, everyone. So um, this presentation is basically, um, hopefully, will show you how Transmart can be used in different settings. And um, I, I, my really big hope is it will inspire other people to use Transmart for all these different things. So the subtitle for this presentation could have easily been reports from the trenches. So we're the company who um, basically supports various organizations um, in their translational research efforts, be it data curation, data analysis, and as a part of this effort, also we um, support Transmart. So what we observe is that there are, as was mentioned before many times, um, there are different types of users for Transmart, or of Transmart. And um, people focus on different things. For uh, some groups, it's important to share data and do this in a nice way, meaning that you know, the security has to be um, there and there should be exporting capabilities that serve the purposes of the team. And some other users tend to focus on analytics. So we, we, we definitely observe these two distinct groups of users. Um, the analytics type projects, they tend to focus on extensive usage of various R scripts or other platforms that they prefer to analyze their data. So basically, these teams, they tend to use Transmart as a container of curated content, and they prefer to um, be able to, to do different things with it. Sometimes they feel limited by Transmart, sometimes they don't. So let's see what happens there. So the first use case is about their Janssen again, and we were uh, very fortunate to be able to work with that team. That's an awesome team, and um, also fortunate to be able to share the story with you. So in this case, basically the situation was that there were multiple um, tenants um, anticipated in the Transmart. So of course Janssen, we had um, Army and Navy users. We had Mount Sinai academic users. Uh, Prometheus, which is their developer of novel biomarkers, and uh, they have all, their own proprietary technology, uh, Lille University and Mayo Clinic. And um, the idea was that they all bring something to the data set. So it's a compiled data set consisting of various types of data. And the challenge was that they all should be able to play in Transmart instance simultaneously, getting access to this data, so such as Mount uh, Mayo Clinic can use the data from U.S. Army and Prometheus data can look at the data from um, U U.S. Army as well. So the roles and objectives were clearly very different. So Army, Navy, um, they were um, coordinating um, the, the whole project in a big sense and, and they were uh, providing a lot of microbiology expertise. Janssen um, supported the platform. Um, they focused on pharmacology, and um, uh, the interest was in the de uh, to develop novel um, protein-based biomarkers. Um, Mount Sinai had really extensive computational capabilities that they brought to the table. They were mostly interested in mining and publishing the data. They also were disease experts. Um, uh, Mayo Clinic uh, were primarily interested in, in interpretation of the data. And as I mentioned, Prometheus is a very, um, it's a very unique company and they focus on the biomarker development so they have their own proprietary uh, platform with their own proprietary uh, data. The ultimate goal of this project was to um, um, develop or work towards the development um, of vaccine for IBD, which is a very bad disease as everybody knows. And um, the focus was to investigate the potential infectious triggers of IBD. So what did we do? Oh, so first the challenges, of course. So I kind of alluded to that. So the data came from all these different sources, and it came in different formats. We had incredibly aggressive timelines. So the Transmart, when we got the project, was not even set up. It was to be um, set up on the cloud. Um, the uh, main stakeholders had major deliverable just a few months um, away from the project initiation date where they had to present the findings on their 
data at the major conference. Um, we did have, um, we, we, we had to be concerned quite a bit with the security of the instance, and we definitely had to ensure that the ex that the um, access to the data was simultaneous for all playing, um, for all, all, all players. So what was our approach? It, it was certainly simple, but the, the thing was that we had to, to execute it. We had to make it work. So we prepared the infrastructure way before we, we got our hands on the data. So we installed Transmart and loaded test studies that were all related to IBD. So that was also in support for this particular project. So we wanted the team to have access to um, uh, publicly available data sets, the geo data sets. Uh, we tested that instance. When we did get the data, we curated and organized it. And um, the, the challenges with this data that um, I think I kind of Um, allude here on this slide. So the data here tended to be very, very skinny. So um, the clinical people in this case, they, um, so again, uh, a lot of data came from the army. So what they did is they tested their patients over a very long period of time. And they basically, I think it's mandatory visits for, um, uh, for, for the soldiers and officers. And so basically we had multiple visits I'm in, in the order of hundreds for each patient, so which generated uh, very skinny tables that are very hard to deal with in Transmart. So we created um, a, um, uh, sort of like um, a special ontology, which we had to run by the team and get their approval on it. So in other words, we ask them if that's convenient for you, if that's working. Um, the, um, some people may, may want to use that. So basically, we organize the data in the subfolders um, by alphabet so that it will be easier for um, the team members um, to find the data, the appropriate data. Um, and other challenges included very custom uh, type of um, data related to biomarkers. And in this case, we ran into a situation where there were um, probes that uh, map to multiple genes. I'm sure some of people in this audience encountered this problem before. So this is something that has to be addressed manually in each instance. And, and I, 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 I don't think the, the solution exists at the moment, um, a general solution exists at the moment. So we had to basically deal with each of these um, probe sets um, manually. So th those were the challenges. So um, there were also platform-related challenges, and I don't know how many of you have installed and used 1.1. Um, we um, had to modify extensively the ETL loader to accommodate for new data types. We had to work out numerous bugs, and um, it, our assessment on this, on this, so we were very happy that we started doing this ahead of their um, uh, deliverable, I would say. But at the end, we made it work, even though it was um, quite buggy. So that's why we're having a 1.2 release, which is much nicer, right? So, um, right, so the, 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 those were um, the challenges there. So the um, infrastructure notes. So basically, again, in, in the previous talk, I think it was addressed as well, um, the simultaneous sign-on and secure sign-on. So we have implemented and beefed up the, the security model for this particular installation of Transmart. Um, we um, um, developed the, um, oh, we um, optimized also the export. I keep confusing the pointer with the uh, slide flipper. Um, optimized the export functionality. So this was extremely important for several team members for several reasons. So they use the um, SAS and S SPSS for uh, their data analysis. So for them, Transmart, again, was mostly um, a container of curated content. And they really uh, wanted to be able to export their biomarker data and clinical data really quickly because you know the data would be updated. They need it quickly. They want to look at their um, uh, new stuff. So we optimized the export functionality in Transmart to work extremely fast for that purpose. 
We also um, had to accommodate several custom requests, such as when people want to see the data in a specific format that is not a default in Transmart export. So what we've done is we appended several um, zip folders to the data as if it were metadata so that people who had special needs for, for the data format could access that data in that specific format with one click as well. So do you guys have any questions on the single sign-on or implementation of the um, security modules? Because this has been addressed before in the previous talk as well. So um, that has been um, done in this project as well. So the scientific outcome of this project was that, um, that basically the, the team members got their deliverables on time, they were able to mine the data, and they were able to identify very um, interesting uh, potential biomarkers that need to be confirmed on a larger data set, but the publications are pending and the presentations were done back in May, so this, is, this, is really, um, this was really an exciting outcome for this project. All right, um, so the second use case um, it has to do with, um, again, pushing Transmart's capabilities and actually using it to load preclinical data um, in oncology space into Transmart instance 1.1. So this um, um, client of ours, Mark, um, and their uh, representative is, is here as well, somewhere in the audience, maybe. Don't see her, she stepped out. Um, also uh, kindly allows us to discuss this project at this, at this meeting. So there, the situation here was that this uh, large preclinical oncology team has generated tons of preclinical testing data that they wanted to keep all in one place. They have also developed a custom R script that they routinely use in their work to look at the data. So basically they use it their um, uh, drug concentrations and tumor volume and weight. Um, they also wished to have vendor data um, living in Transmart. And this is because sometimes you wanna check whether or not, um, well, first of all, the specifics of the uh, Xenograph model that you're using, but also maybe look for um, other vendors that may, may provide similar um, um, models, or you maybe want to find additional models that you may want to purchase or what have you. So basically, this particular add-on uh, has not been, as far as I know, used in Transmart before, so we had to develop that as well. So at the beginning of the project, we were provided with um, a MySQL database containing all the study data so um, we reverse engineered the, um, the data schema and um, curated drug names and model information. Um, we then um, structured this data into the files that would be acceptable or will be consumable by Transmart's ETL. Of course, created all the mapping files, that's the usual. And in this case, we decided to implement nine protocols to format the data. And the reason for that was very simple. There were, first of all, hundreds and hundreds of drugs, uh, dozens and dozens of models, and of course, many, many experiments in which these drugs were tested. So just to maybe scare you a little bit here. So this was the original um, uh, uh, MySQL database structure. Um, looks simple. So then we have to take it and you know, load it into Transmart. So, um, these are their uh, nine protocols. Um, you can also obviously use pipeline pilot for that. We stuck with nine. Um, so this is the uh, protocol that has been used to generate uh, drug data files. So in the process of executing these protocols, we also curated drug data files. So this is another nine protocol that we wrote to uh, generate mapping files uh, for this data. And the third one was used to generate animal and model data. So, the, um, so that was the data component of the project, and we will see how that kind of came out at the end in Transmart. 
So the second component was that we needed to use this custom R script and embed it into Transmart because the team did want to um, uh, use their script they were familiar with and continue using it. And Transmart is quite conducive to this kind of uh, workflow. So basically, it's meant to accept novel um, analytical workflows. So the, the, the thing is that you have to um, make sure that the R script or whatever analytics you're using can work with, an exist, with existing data model in Transmart. And in reality, what it really means is that in the end, you have to tweak both data model and R script in order for this to happen. So, um, so the original R script directly queries original MySQL database. So we converted the MySQL database to Postgres and then converted the original R script to work, to work with that syntax. Um, so then we tweaked the script yet again to provide the input um, and output compatible with Transmart interface. So these are the, the actual steps that were taken um, in order for this to happen. And then we installed the R script um, as a Transmart module. So how does it look like at the end of the day? So the animal model, that nine script that I showed you, um, generated um, the data that was loaded into the search component of Transmart. And um, here is the um, animal models listed here that you can search. And if you um, open that, you can um, actually view vendor information. And um, basically, that serves as a nice reference. If you're working with multiple models, you can locate your model and read about it and locate similar models as well. So this is just a screenshot to show you that we indeed um, uh, load the study and load the data as promised, and we use those R scripts to, to process the data. Um, so again, for people who are dealing with data, you would probably um, recognize this challenge, and, and that is the ontology assembly. We had a few choices. We, can, um, we had a choice what, to, uh, what entities to choose as, as our primary subjects. We, um, um, at the end, um, chose to be, um, to be drug centric rather than experiments centric, so that worked out well. And so we, um, again, tested different things here to find the optimal solution. Um, and, and of course, this all has to do with uh, catering to end user. They have to be able, they have to be comfortable with a data presentation in Transmart, and it has to work for them, otherwise nobody will ever use the application. So, um, we um, had to re-engineer things a few times, and I have to say that nine protocols are exceptionally, con or pipeline pilot, if you will, are con very, very um, good tools to use in this case, because they allow us to modify the, um, uh, the files very, very quickly. So we do not need to recurate or reproduce anything on scale um, once we identify what we need to change, it's a simple tweak of the protocol, and you can do this on this massive data set uh, with basically a click of a button. So that was very good. So these are the results. This is our new R script sitting here in Transmart menu, which generates the plots just like they were uh, doing before in R. Now they do that in Transmart. And these are a few more screenshots um, of that same um, script working on the data. So th this is all. So this hopefully will show you that um, the capabilities of Transmart can be extended. Um, there are different things that you know, we can do, and Transmart is capable of doing. Um, I have to thank um, a really incredible team that we had a pleasure to work with, and um, Janssen team as well as Mark team. Um, many of you know these people. And again, special thanks to Mei Ping from Mark, who is here today. Um, who is very helpful, and we discuss this at length. So I would be happy to answer any questions with regards to these two use cases. Um, 
questions? Anybody? Hi, my name is Maura Dowling. I'm from here at University of Michigan. I'm sorry I came in a little bit, so forgive me if you answer this during the presentation. So when you're using RScript in Transmart, Transmart platform, are you using the same command you're using R, or is it automatic? How is it that you actually use R within Transmart? Are you typing in commands? No. So, so it's just automatic? It's automatic. It's a okay. workflow. It becomes a part of your menu okay. in, the, in the workflow, men, advanced workflow menu. Okay. Um, you do need to do these steps that I was um, describing. Okay. Basically, you first of all, you need to, you know, if you take a customer script that, you know, has certain requirements for input as data, you need to make sure that the data model that you have in Transmart will work with that. So um, yeah. we had to modify both the data the original data, of course, using those nine protocols as well as our script okay. to, to be able to do that. But it's possible and becomes part of the menu. You don't need to type anything in the R interface anymore. Okay. So okay. it's just dra usual drag and drop of concepts okay. and then executing the script. Thank you. Sure. And I think we have another question. Two quick questions. Uh, they're kind of boring practical questions. Your SAML implementation, is that needing 1.2? And is that available on the, the, the GitHub? Um, that particular one was um, employed on 1.1. So I'm guessing it would be extendable, but that would be probably the question to my IT guy who did that. OK. No, it's a question about whether or not SAML can be executed in 1.2, this one. So it was done on 1.1, so originally. And is there any real difference between using Nyman Pipeline Pilot or? Nyman Pipeline Pilot, one, no. one is free, the other is commercial software. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> but did, did you see a technical advantage of one over the other for constructing a kind of a? No, the person who did this, he's comfortable with both. He prefers nine, um, I guess, for obvious reasons. And uh, so he's, he's very comfortable writing those protocols. I think for somebody who's just learning how to use that, that can be daunting. For someone who's familiar with this thing, it's fairly easy. So okay. yeah. otherwise, no difference. So you mentioned that there are some, let's say, challenges if you're having um, expression data with um, several IDs per gene. How did you deal with that? Um, at the end of the day, there were fortunately not too many in that specific data type. Um, so we had to talk with a team and inspect, you know, basically the platform that they provide us just would say, this probe maps to this cluster of, of genes. And we needed to resolve that because there is no, Transmart doesn't understand this kind of logic. So what we did is we, um, we had to discuss that with a team and pick one. So. Have you been thinking about um, integrating RNA-seq data that you would basically have the same problem in a much bigger scale when you're trying to um, have the connection between transcripts and genes? Yes. So. The, I, I think I think if you want to do that, that has to be there has to be a data model modification, right? So because otherwise, we, you cannot do this on the scale of RNA seq. Okay, thank you. I hope it's not me. Okay. Just to comment on the RNA seq data um, for one point two, there is a. Um, RNA-seq data capable, uh, compatibility, but uh, that's, um, everything's collapsed on a single gene. So it's not on a transcript base, it's, it's gene-based. Yes. Um, I have a quick question in terms of, um, um, like how many data that, uh, data set studies that you're loading to, um, you know, either of the, the instances? And the one question that, you know, we have is um, in terms of bulk loading, batch loading data rather than 
you know, single study loading through the interface? So, you know, in we've encountered those situations before where you have massive amounts of different data sets. So in both of these cases, though, the situation was different. It was one data set, but it was large. So we did not have to deal with um, multiple data sets. So, um, and again, um, I, I think it's all doable. So I know that you guys have been working on the batch loader as well. Um, we actually haven't. We, oh, you haven't? We're, I, we're, we're searching for one. Search, <laughs> searching for one. So, yeah. you know, for I do not see it as a major problem in a sense. So basically, once your um, data is formatted in a way compatible with Transmart, for example, I, I, I really highly recommend, like if you have a batch uh, situation, I highly recommend building NIME or pipeline pilot that at least QCs your data, because then you can simply start loading and, and just kind of let it go. Um, and actually, I know that Janssen has a lot of experience with loading batch data, so you might want to talk to them about that. Um, but in both of these cases, the data sets were just massive, but they were single data sets. So it's okay. a slightly different use case. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for that, um, there is the incremental loading capability right now, so which will be really useful. So. Yeah, it would be useful, yeah. Any more questions? Okay, I guess we can go to break early. Excellent. Thanks again for all the speakers.